We are a week removed from Extreme Rules, which is WrestlingTruth.com writer Peter Musket called Extremely Dull instead of Extreme Rules. And um, it's hard to disagree, really. I mean, for an event marketed as the most hardcore extreme night of the year, it did feel a, a little watered down than it's been in previous years. Um, but I guess that's just a symptom of the wider product right now. Wrestling is never going to be that, that, that chair shots to the head, table spots every Monday night, you know, all the constant suplexes to people's heads and things like that. It's just evolved beyond that kind of style. What we know about concussions, um, WWE's corporate sort of caring image that they have now, it's just way beyond what it used to be. And for the welfare of the wrestlers, I mean, that's a good thing. They no longer need to to fry their brains and destroy their bodies and use ridiculous amounts of steroids and take ridiculous bumps. They do that to some degree anyway, just just wrestling in a ring. That that takes its toll. But um, it wasn't really as extreme as perhaps some of us might have hoped um, going into it. In terms of moving forward... The Shield are obviously a main focus. They, uh, you know, as they should be. Kofi Kingston, in the end, just being a, a sort of placeholder so they can give the US title to Dean Ambrose. And we also saw Reigns and Rollins get the, the tag belts from Team Hell No. So these guys really are now the mid card, the main focus beyond the main event. And that's an encouraging prospect. You know, although WWE have. They have the Cena problem. They they do have the, quote, part-timers coming in and out. But you can't fault their push in recent years to bring youth to the roster. They've certainly been hot and cold on some talents. Antonio Cesaro comes to mind. They have feared pushing certain people to the top. You know, how long did Dol- Dolph Ziggler wait? And he's still not particularly um, established in in a sense that he's he's not top of the pile because he's good he's top of the pile because he cheeks and because he was an opportunist with the cashing in the money in the bank but in terms of the depth of the talent roster there is talent there when they need it when they choose to use it um of course, we saw the repackage, the, the re-debut of Joe Hennig, previously known by the, the ridiculous name of Michael McGillicutty, now a, now a Paul Heyman guy, now embracing his roots as the son of Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig, which is what they should have done from the start. I mean, why mess around coming up with a gimmick, trying to get somebody over, when their backstory is already written? He's the son of Mr. Perfect. There's umpteen different angles you can take with that. It doesn't mean he has to be like his father or anything like that. He could be bitter, you know, that that while his father was off being Mr. Perfect, he was being neglected, and now he's a bitter, angry young man about it. You know, whatever. So I'm glad they've they've stopped this this McGillicutty crap, and he's finally getting a chance um, to shine. However... His name is still lame as fuck. What is a Curtis Axel? It, it, it sounds like something a mechanic would use, you know, pass me the Curtis Axel. Or, or, or some, some cartoon character from the 80s, Curtis Axel fighting crime. What's wrong with Joe Hennig? Stop being so obsessed with copywriting names. Who cares? If in three years he jumps to TNA and uses the same name. WWE is so far ahead of anyone, it's not going to matter to them. So what if he works the indies uh, and the name makes a few promoters a bit more money? Isn't that just, just giving back to the wrestling business? Isn't competition what improves the product? I don't think it's 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 as big a deal as WWE want to make it out to be that 
wrestlers, you know, leave and use use the same name. Why does it matter? And his name doesn't really make any sense anyway because his father was called Kurt and now he's called Curtis. And where's this Axel come from? That's not his second name. <laughs> if anything, they they should have called him Axel Hennig. You know? It's just little things like that that annoy me um, in WWE. Just the way they they don't put much effort into the little things. But yeah, a new Paul Heyman guy. Um, and he even got a sort of a rub from Triple H. I mean... Obviously, it wasn't a clean win, but it's it's better than getting kicked in the nuts like Wade Barrett uh, a few months back. But one thing I will say, and not to, not to keep harping on the negative, I know a lot of podcasts are just like, oh, this sucks, that sucks, wrestling sucks. But why does he have to wear trunks? What is it with WWE and having nearly all the roster wearing those those sort of Y front speedo trunks? They just don't look right on some people. When I look at Curtis Axel, he's kind of got a bit of a, a Benoit build to him. I think he'd look much better in long tights or or Samoa Joe shorts or, or, or a singlet like his dad wore. You know, maybe I'm spending too much time looking at what men wear in a wrestling ring, but <laughs> there's something unappealing about the way he looks. Um... And it's the same problem with the rest of the roster. If you want to build character and and have these unique character traits, then mix up the attire a bit. We used to have men in dresses and people in jeans and lots of other people used to wear the longer the longer tights. You know, like Edge. But now everyone just kind of looks like Randy Orton. But anyway, let's let's get into some of the top stories of the week. Rey Mysterio has had yet another surgery on his knee. WWE doctors have determined that Rey Mysterio will need yet another surgery on his knee before being fit to get back in the ring. Dr. James Andrews described the work as minor and the goal is for Mysterio to return for August. The former world champ hasn't wrestled a full schedule since December 2012. One of WWE's primary concerns in recent years has been justifying Ray's pay demands with his injury proneness. Sin Cara and Alberto Del Rio were both supposed to help pick up the Hispanic market as Ray wound down his career, but so far neither have really lived up to the expectations. Um, so yeah, Ray, Ray getting more surgery. Um, I like Mysterio, I think he still has a few good matches left in him. Um, but he's injured a lot, and you've got to wonder at what point he needs to walk away so he can literally walk away. It's one thing pushing it until you can't push it no more, but then what happens to your quality of life after that? Edge made the smart decision. He got out of there, but Ray keeps coming back, injury after injury, and I'm not saying you can blame him, It's what he loves. He makes money. He makes other people money. But it wouldn't surprise me if in the next year or so WWE book him sort of pass the torch um, uh, and, you know, do some kind of retirement thing. I mean, they were planning the whole Sin Cara versus Rey Mysterio thing at WrestleMania. Sin Cara basically supposed to be the next masked superstar taking the torch Um, from Rey Mysterio, they were going to sort of be, he was sort of going to be Mysterio's nemesis, and ultimately he would overtake Mysterio and go off into the next generation. And if I was in charge, you know, what better way to end things than have a mask versus mask? Rey has never been unmasked on WWE programming. I say book him against Sin Cara, mask versus mask, do the whole WrestleMania um, you know, they wanted to do a mask um, record breaking thing. The most amount of fans wearing masks, at a, you know, live event or something like that. Yep, they could, they could do all that. Have Mysterio lose um, and then have him walk away afterwards, you know. Oh, ooh, there goes my internet um, dongle just falling off the shed. <laughs> but um, yeah, have him lose. Have him sell it as a big deal that he lost the mask. 
have him walk away, um, you know, without being a shadow of, a, of, his, of, of his former self. They could have a, a commemorative replica mask to, to, to sort of squeeze out that last bit of merchandising revenue. Um, and then Sin Cara can go on and, and fill that void. And I know a lot of people hate on Sin Cara because he botched a lot of the time when he first came in and they've not really developed a depth to his character yet. But you've got to realise that when Mysterio, you know, came to America, he didn't he didn't perfect his style overnight. When he When he came to North America, he came with other luchadors. It was a package. They all knew how to work together. When he was in ECW, he came with Psychosis uh, and Juventud Guerrero, uh, or Guerrero even. And then when they went to WCW, it was the Cruiserweight division. They brought in lots of similar wrestlers. They were there to showcase that unique style. It, it, it was playing to their strengths. Sin Cara has basically just been dumped on a roster with people who 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 have learned to wrestle a completely different way than him. So it's not surprising that he botched quite a lot when he came in. It will take some time. WWE aren't really very accommodating to him. What do they expect? Him just to come in and, and, and be able to do everything? It, it doesn't really work like that. But I think he, he's made a lot of progress and you don't really see that botching that you used to see. So... You know, if they want a masked superstar to take, you know, to carry on, then why not Sin Cara? Um, moving on to some more somber news. British wrestling legend Mick McManus has passed away at the ripe age of 93 years old. McManus was a household name in the 60s and 70s when UK wrestling boomed on national television. One memorable moment was when he lost to the comedy wrestler Catweasel who tickled him into submission. In the angle, McManus was so humiliated, he refused to wrestle him ever again until they reignited the heat for McManus's final televised bout. McManus's 1962 match with Jackie Palo was watched by over 20 million viewers. He is a former British and European middleweight champion and a British welterweight champion. Now, I'm guessing the American listeners probably won't know who McManus is. Um, but over here, if you ask somebody of a, of a certain age, maybe, um, you know, people like my parents or a bit older, if you ask them what wrestlers do they know, they'll probably, you know, mention Hulk Hogan, maybe, maybe The Rock. Um, but they'll also say Mick McManus and Giant Haystacks and Big Daddy. Um, because for a period... British wrestling was huge over here. It was presented on a TV show called World of Sport. Um, you know, no subscriptions. This is just regular television with, with millions of viewers. And this World of Sport was sort of like a, a block of programming on, on Saturday afternoons. It would have football scores and results and coverage and stuff. All sorts of different sporting um, coverage. And then it would show wrestling. And although everyone knew, you know, it was staged, it was it, it was just a bit of fun. They would pretend that it was real. Um, the the presenter would treat it just as if it was, you know, the football that was on before it. And some people would really get into it. It was seen as as, as good family friendly entertainment. I mean, half the fans were grandmothers getting angry, you know, at the bad guys and launching their handbags into the ring and stuff like that. It was. Um, Looking back now, it's very dated, and in, in terms of what America was putting out, it was a bit, a bit weak, um, especially in the sort of main event of, of 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 the show. Very, very theatrical. Very, I guess you could say, an English equivalent of the Hulk Hogan over the top, but looks really, really bad. Like, <laughs> but on the undercard, yeah, there was some very solid. Um, European wrestlers that did eventually go off to America and um, and whatnot, but basically what happened in in the eighties, some bigwig in an office somewhere decided that it was it was too lowbrow, too working class, and they kicked it off the air. 